Hey there, and uh, welcome back to my desk, and today we are going to be doing a little bit of experimentation regarding the Famicom Disk System, one of Nintendo's most successful console add-ons. That's a very low bar to clear. But anyway, the reason I am making this video is because the other day, I came across a store just selling uh, this, the Famicom Disk System Manual. Now, I, I rarely collect uh, consoles complete in box, which means I don't really get a chance to get uh, these manuals. Except for that one time I got a Hong Kong Famicom and I got the HK manual along with it, but I don't have one for the disc system and they just had it selling around for a very cheap price and I thought, hey, why not? I, I've been like such a collector of disc system stuff, I might as well also get the a manual for it, right? And there's a pretty like straightforward manual, there's some like funny illustrations about, you know, oh, don't put the disc in bad areas, don't put it near magnets and stuff. But uh, what was interesting to me was... Uh, these two pages in particular. Now, uh, I don't know Japanese. I did try to like use a, a Google Translate camera to <laughs> translate this. But basically, what this part over here says is uh, when you want to keep the save data on your Famicom discs and you don't want to accidentally erase them, you can actually write protect them uh, by basically... Uh, doing something to the top corners of the, the cartridges. They're like little tabs on the top corners. And if you break them off, then you would basically write protect them. Because uh, I do know that uh, there's a write protect error for the Famicom disk system. I, I think I've actually heard about that before, but I've actually never uh, wondered, or I've never actually found out how it works. So uh, I tried looking it up online and there are a few sources online, particularly in Famicom forums that mention this. But, uh, to my knowledge, there has not been a video that has demonstrated the right protecting capability of these Famicom discs. So I figured, why not? Let's make a video where we right protect a Famicom disc. Now, I don't want to, you know, butcher uh, one of these, like, original Famicom discs I have here. Like, I'm, so if you, if we take a, well, first of all, we can, we just use an original disc for demonstration for now. But uh, as you can see on the top here, there are like these little yellow tap. This manual was... <laughs> I need a dark background. There we go. Now you can see there's these little tabs on top. For example, next to the A side, there's like this little tab. And if I break this off, then side A of this disc will become right protected. You can read the data from it, but if you try and write something to it, it will be... it will The system will just fail and give you the error. I believe how this works is that there is something in the disc drive that tries to like insert something through this hole and... Uh, if there's like nothing, there's no tab blocking the way and it successfully goes through and it somehow like right protects it. It's just like a little disk strap mechanism there. I've, I'm not going to bother like taking apart at this system right now to check, but that's the general gist of how it works. Now, obviously I'm not going to be breaking up tabs on this. I still want to save my Zelda progress, but I did copy a uh, disk disk over to a bootleg disk that I don't really have a use for, but, uh, I got a few of these lying around. There's like more I can find in the future, but as you can see, it's basically the same as a, a regular original disc with these little tabs on top. So uh, we're just gonna we I've basically before I filmed this video, I copied the contents of this disc, which actually contains like a complete save file, over to here, and we will just mess around with it. We'll uh, just check if the saving functionality works on here. And then we're going to break off these tabs and see what happens. So let's jump cut to the TV. All right. So here we have our Famicom disk system all set up and ready to go. I'm just going to take this uh, boot like this. The label doesn't matter. I already rewrote it like a few times already. And this time we are copying Zelda 1 to it. Or we've copied Zelda 1 to it. So we're just going to load it. There it is. And it's Zelda. So, I believe uh, save files for The Legend of Zelda are actually stored on the B side. So, all we have to do is basically, later on, just, uh, well, let's switch to the B side first, just to confirm it's working. Grab my controller. You see here, I have a complete save. Uh, this is actually, <laughs> I, I basically follow a guide because Zelda 1 is one of the games you have to play with Guy, and I actually did finish this on original console. And uh, we're gonna like just register like a new name here. 
And as you can see, it's trying to load. I think every time it saves a new file, it's going to write that to the disk. I'm just going to write something random here. Let's call it sus. There we go. Uh, and then finish. And it's going to save the new file that we created to the disk. And it should be able to do it without any problems. There we go. And uh, for good measure, you could also like erase it, erase a file, and it basically works the same way as you like creating a new file. You just pick a file, one erase, and then it writes to the disk, and you know erase the file, erases the file. But I can start uh, the new file that we just created, and all should be fine. There we go. I am laying. I don't. I'm just gonna like not even get the sword, just to see uh, what happens. If I just like, yeah. Anyway, uh, we are gonna. Well, this disc works just as expected. So, not, uh, next we're just gonna like try and break one of the tabs, see if this will like prevent it from saving ever again. Oh no, the horror! So according to the manual, if we want to write protect the B side, which I assume is where the save files are stored, we have to break the top left of you know the B side, the tab, top left tab. So basically this tab over here. Now, up until this point, I haven't actually tested how like fragile these tabs are. So if I just like try to push it in, it probably won't break if I just try to like crunch it in my finger. Yeah, I know that's not doing anything. So I'm gonna have to like use some other tools to try and break it. So uh, bear with me for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I just... Bend that in with a spudger, and I think I should be able to just pull that out. Nope, I gotta need more force. Oh, come on. You can do it. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's enough. There's still like a little bit left. I'll try and see if I can remove most of it. Pull it out from the other side. There we go. And now. There is a hole on the top of our disc. Now, let's see if this still works. Okay, we are back at the disc system with our uh, little newly right protected disc. The hole is clearly visible. Now, since these are actually uh, based off of an existing uh, floppy disk format, namely uh, Mitsubishi's Quick Disk, I'm imagining this method of right protection is also actually pretty common, or like at least has appeared in other types of like non-Nintendo floppy disks, but uh, don't quote me on that. I actually need to do more research regarding that, so oops. But anyway, we're just gonna test this right out. We're gonna put in, well, not the B side. We're gonna put in the A side first, see what happens. There's the screen. And there we go, there's Zelda. Zelda looks perfectly fine. Now, we're gonna switch to the B side and see what happens. I hear some noise coming from the, uh... Yeah, there's like a noise. There's like a little ticking noise coming from the disk drive that wasn't there before. But we're just gonna load our uh, sus file that we created. There we go. Uh, still works. So let's go and grab the sword real quick. There we go. And uh, we're just gonna die. Because we gotta go save our game. See if it actually saves our sword progress. Alright, come here. And I'm dead. Game over. Oh man, now I gotta go save my game. See what happens. Ticking noise is still going on. Error free. Yep. So error free is the error code for a right protected disk. So yeah. Just can't save our game. It just throws up an error. Uh, and we're basically stuck. I think the only way we have to get out of here is to actually reset the entire console. Which just brings us back to the menu. But we're going to try something else real quick. Oh, the ticking noise is gone. That's weird. I don't know why it was there the first time. But anyway, uh, now we are going to try creating a new save. Or actually, let's just like try go let's go into kill mode. 
I'm feeling murderous. Let's go into kill mode. We're gonna erase our sus save file. See if uh, see if it like. <laughs> oh, there we go. Kill mode. I'm gonna go down to the sus link. Kill it, and we're gonna save. I think it's actually telling us to like write a new file in its place, but I don't necessarily have to do that. But uh, I could just like you know. Uh, I want to play the second quest. I'm gonna call this third file Zelda. So erase the second file, and call the third file Zelda. Wow! It didn't even like try to load the disk. It just straight up says error free. <laughs> I didn't even have to like. It doesn't. It didn't have to even read the disk again. It just threw up the error. So at this point, you might be thinking, well, what if I, uh, you know, I remove the tab from my desk and now I regret the decision and I want to like uh you know re-unlock the protection again so I can write new saves to it. Well Nintendo actually has you covered because in that same manual it actually tells you you can uh re-engage like uh basically disengage the right protection by just having something to block this hole. So basically if you tape over these notches or this hole over here, then you should be able to theoretically Rewrite to the disk. So let's try that. I'm just gonna use regular old uh, scotch tape here. Very lousy job of just like, you know, putting it over the hole. And uh, there we go. Let's see if this actually lets us write to the disk once again. There we go. Switch to B side. Hopefully the stuck tape won't cause any problems. There's our two save files. We're gonna go into kill mode and uh, remove sus and make our third file, once again, Zelda. All right, let's see, moment of truth. Oh, it's moving, it's doing its thing. Oh. And there you go. <laughs> it actually did work. Now my new third file is now on the desk. So I can open my Zelda save file and just march straight into the second quest. I've never actually played the second quest. So I, I'm walking in here without a sword. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, be I believe if I go and grab the sword and die, I will be able to actually save the progress of me getting the sword now. Gone, dead, and safe. And yep, it's definitely saving. It's totally saving. It takes a while. Famicom disk system moments, but uh. <laughs> there we go. Zelda, one! Because one means I died once. And if I go back in, I should still have the sword back. Yep, there we go. Got my funny laser beam sword back. But uh, yeah, there we go. As you can see, this tape method totally works. So every time you just want to lock your saves, you can just remove the tape. And your saves will no longer be able to be overwritten by your younger brother. <laughs> just wants to... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's like any Japanese users back in the day who actually had their saves like overwritten by their little brothers. <laughs> that would be actually kind of sad. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this uh, little known trick has been useful to them. And that has been the very wacky method of basically just using a pair of tweezers to right protect your Famicom discs. Now, uh, I don't know, I, as I said, I don't know if this is actually in use in, like, been used by other floppy systems. I imagine it is. But this is still a pretty ingenious way of, like, doing right protection without physically adding, like, a switch to the discs themselves. Because that's the one I'm, that's the type of right protection I'm most familiar with for, like, floppy discs and, you know, cards and all that. But, uh, yeah, I just never saw someone actually attempt this on video, so I figured... I would sacrifice a bootleg, well, not really sacrifice, it's still usable, but <laughs> just just missing missing this little tab in the corner, but oops. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you just enjoyed just uh, seeing this thing in action, because I don't think a lot of people have actually seen this in action. 
And uh, yeah, that will be it for this quick little video. And this video will also be going up public as opposed to just on my Patreon. But for those who are watching publicly, I do have more of these unscripted bonus videos on random topics that might not fit a full main channel video over on Patreon for as low as $1 a month. So if you want to, you know, just check those out, head to the link in the description below. And if, uh, if you support or not support, I thank you for visiting anyway. But uh, I am definitely very grateful for your continued support. But uh, I'm, you can, as you can see, if I'm, I'm rambling unscripted, I start to lose my coherence. <laughs> but, uh, all right, I'm just going to end this before it gets any worse. So uh, I will see you guys uh, in the next video, whenever that is. So stay safe and take care.